if there's someone else watching me now and you have a pressing question, I don't want to ignore it. So why don't you go? Is there another question that's a press that's in, like an important question? And I, I, I don't want to my, I don't want to shut it down. My sister and and her husband have a church and she has a Christian bookstore and and like you're saying uh, to a Christian that they love Jesus. I mean, she loves me. And, and I hear JC, JC, JC all the time, all the time. And I asked her, I said, when was he Christ? And uh, I wanted to get your take on when was Jesus Christ? Never. That's right. Never. It means, look, the word Christ. It means enormous. It just means you can get an oil massage by a really fancy masseuse in Rome and that's Christ you just some put oil on you it meant nothing more than that okay so uh, we're waiting for Mashiach we don't want to use a word like Christ because that word came to be associated with Christianity but um right I I I just look I think it's important not to be offensive. I know it sounds crazy coming from me, but I, I really care about Christians and I don't want to offend people. I'm a very gentle person. I, ne I never yell at people. I've never yelled at my children in my life, in my life. I'm just, you could say things in a way, you know, there are 10 ways to communicate anything and try to pick a way that's just not hostile. It's not offensive. That doesn't, because if someone is angry at you, they're not going to want to learn from you. And it's also why do that? And that's important, I think, in your marriage and every relationship. If you could figure out a, there's a nice way to say the same thing, you know, a lot of pain and anguish could be saved. So I would not be using, you know, when did he become the Christ? Because I, it, it's, it's not valuable. In truth, at some stage, someone invented the notion that Jesus was the Messiah. And we don't know when, but it happened at some stage. And that would explain why this is the big mystery secret of the first eight chapters of the book of Mark. Okay. It's a very, it's a little complicated. I don't want to overwhelm you, but it's, people didn't think that Jesus was the Messiah when he was alive. That's a later development. And you could see that very easily when looking at the Christian Bible. In fact, illustrate this um when jesus asks as an example we're told jesus asks in matthew 16 like who do you say that i am and nobody knows right except peter figures it out right well, what does that mean that means he wasn't walking around saying i'm jesus christ right now you're asking, now you may ask me the question well rabbi how could you use the new testament in that way because it's embarrassing he's this is called a criteria of embarrassment. Let's say for a moment that Jesus, in his one-year ministry, according to synoptics, a three-year ministry, according to John, was walking around saying that I'm the Messiah, right? So he was saying that. Why would someone invent the idea that nobody knew who he was and he never walked around saying that? It doesn't make sense. It makes much more sense. I want you to understand how to do the forensics on this that we have something very odd, very striking here. In Mark, the earliest gospel, it's a huge secret. Eight chapters, it's half the book. Nobody knows who he is, and it's a secret. And how did that get in there? And how did it get in there that nobody knows? And when Peter says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, we are told Jesus responds that flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. I mean, no one could have told you that. What do you mean? I thought he walked around saying, I'm Jesus Christ. That conversation, we are told, happens right before the crucifixion. That's at the end of the game. So you understand how, in fact, in Jewish tradition, which none of it is complimentary about Jesus. I mean, none of our none of what we have preserved about Jesus in Jewish tradition is favorable to Christianity. But there's no claim that he was a false messiah. So that was a claim made after he was dead. Um so, you know, but I would just encourage you in speaking to Christians and say that if you say something in a way that's 
hurtful and flattering. It's just going to hurt them, and it that's not a good idea because you're sinning for Hashem, and they're going to just feel bad. And you're not going to want. No one wants to learn from someone they don't like, right? I'm sure there's someone that you don't like, just personally can't stand. It's not a good thing, but it probably probably is someone like that, right? Well, even that person knows something you don't know. You just don't want to learn from them because you don't like them. So don't become that person, okay? So I wouldn't use those things. You don't hear me using that. Are there any I other? Need, th yeah, I need to work on my nastiness. Um, it's it's really important. Just you know, the Torah says, "Well, well, have to lerecha kamocha." Torah says you should love your neighbor as you love yourself. Well, what does that mean? Like, I can say that I should love my neighbor, okay, but as myself, there's no way I can love my neighbor as I love myself because I really love myself, right? <laughs> really? All right. So what does that mean? It's so obvious. I mean, if you want to know how to love your neighbor, ask yourself, how would I want to be loved? And therefore, our rabbis deduce, deduce from that that what is hateful to you, don't do to somebody else. So I would just say this, because this is what guides me. When I have to say something or do something, I always ask the question, well, how would I feel? So before you say something to someone, ask the question, well, if someone said that to me, how would I feel? And if 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 you go, you know what, I'd, it would, I'd feel really bad, then don't do it. So Love your neighbor as you love yourself really is a way, not that you can love someone the way you love yourself. No, that, that doesn't make sense. What it is is a way of calibrating how to love someone. If you would want to be spoken to that way, love that way, that's how you should treat somebody else. And therefore, its corollary is what is hateful to you don't do it to anyone else. So that's a, and pretty easy to gauge what would turn you off, what would bother you, what would offend you. So I really encourage you to think about that when speaking to a Christian. You know. Thank you, Rabbi. All right, Thank God. You. you know, so that's something to keep in mind. Really. You know, I, I, I try. I even though I do something that's incredibly <laughs> crazy and offensive, but I'm really, I really care about the Christians who are listening. I really like them. I mean, sometimes I find they're crazy, and I don't. I mean, there's some really bad characters out there. But I, my default is that they're good people, so I care about them, and I certainly wouldn't speak to them in a way that I would want to be spoken to.